I'm Kendra Harris and we're at Johns Hopkins Hospital. I started my internship 18 days ago. Kendra was a medical student here at Hopkins who was one of our finest students and now is being one of my finest interns. She excelled at, in college. She was a Rhodes Scholar. She was active in many things. She's done research, but that just undervalues her once you get to know her as an individual, as a human being. She can go ahead and reorder the 8 o'clock labs for 2.30 and that'd be fine. Her passion for excellence is almost palpable when you sit and talk to her. I'm gonna go with this, baby. She radiates um, just high standards, but she does it in a way that's not intimidating or imposing. It's in a way that's, that's fun, friendly, and collegial. She, when I talk to her about the job she's doing, about medical school, she attributes um, a substantial, if not greater, portion of her commitment to excellence or love of, of kind of helping people to her college experience. I went to high school in Big Fork, Montana. My family owned a little resort and marina. We had boats and cabins, and um, that meant sort of a hundred 18-hour days of helping guests get moved into cabins, cleaning boats, fixing boats, buying gas, running a convenience store. Those days were brutal. It was an extremely motivating experience when it came to thinking about what I wanted to do after high school, which is to say that I wanted to get out. <laughs> I mean, the high school I went to was rural, which is fine. Um, but the science curriculum was sort of a balance between creationism and evolution, and then the other sciences, chemistry, physics, didn't have good staffing, so we just um, basically weren't exposed. And I had money to visit one school, only one school, and it's really the only love at first sight story in my life ever. I have a visceral, emotional memory of getting out of the car, being on the grass in front of the science building, and just knowing that I needed to go to Grinnell. From a personal standpoint, the most important thing that happened at Grinnell is I met three or four mentors that, that, uh, that helped me push the boundaries of what I had done prior, and Kathy Jacobson is one of those people. I was always hearing from other profs, oh, she's your advisee, you know, isn't she amazing? You know, everybody loved to talk in the hallways about, about Kendra's successes. Um, but it wasn't just because it all came naturally to her, it was because she wanted to understand everything about the material. That's what mattered, was, was knowing how it all worked, how it all fit together. Those years were about pushing myself and trying on different coats and finding the one that fit. And the fact that I was in an environment where that was supported, both financially, emotionally, and from a program perspective. I mean, that's when, when I talk about what Grinnell did for me, that's what Grinnell did. It provided me a place to grow up. She too was not one of these students who came in and said, I'm pre-med and therefore the only courses that matter to me are things that are gonna direct me towards medical school. She wanted to take evolution, she wanted to take ecology, she recognized that these were all things that were important to understanding public health and to, and to being a well-rounded um, medical scientist or a physician for that matter. When everything that you do helps you move forward, when everyone around you wants to help you succeed, I look back and I think, I hope I said thank you enough. I mean, I, I just, um, I just have not had the good fortune to find that again. So actually, I was recently back for my reunion, my five-year reunion. Gosh, so when I, when I walked up to the front of the science building and the, they have these little mechanical doors and the doors opened and I walked into that little foyer, I had a palpable, a palpable sense of, of peace. For me, that building is like the physical representation of, of my time there.
Often, late at night, I'd find that the, that big open atrium with the big glass that goes two stories and there, there's study tables there would be empty. So when I was trying to work and stay focused, I'd find that playing my violin was an extremely relaxing thing. So I'd work and work and work until I couldn't work anymore. And then I would, I would take off my socks and shoes and I would get up on that table and there's that, that big glass wall. Um, and I would just play as hard as I could for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I would feel refreshed. And so my violin would float around that place and nobody ever bothered it. I just left it there. And the people who know me would laugh about it because the security guards would be like, who, who, the, whose books are those and why is that violin sitting around here? It's so weird to think of space being so important, but you know, every time I'm, I'm even in the state, I'm gonna make my way to that building. And I, when I was recently back, I saw the addition and I was so jealous because that, um, that science library, I just would have lived in that. So yeah, so I'm glad. I'm glad that it's done. Um, glad that it's done. She'll touch many lives directly as a physician, but she'll touch by an order of magnitude of 10 or hundreds other lives through her research efforts and through her educational efforts. I'll see you later, okay? okay. So when I think about you know, the other me's in the world, the 18-year-old uh, kids in the middle of nowhere who, who really hunger for a bigger world, who, who want to figure out how it is that they can contribute, I, you know, I, I my heart is warmed by the fact that I know that Grinnell exists. It's where my mind decided to uh, awaken. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I would not be who I am today without those four years. And there's no other experience in my life that I can say that about, period.